You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. The six concert series produced by Carla Burbrayer for the Gwen Sector Creative Living Center in Perfect Harmony is coming to a close. Featuring WSO Associate Principal Horn Ken McDonald. I'm delighted to say that he's joined me to tell us a little bit more about the program. Hello, Ken. Welcome back to Classic 107. Thank you. Well, it's so good to have you here. And uh, over the past few weeks, we've been hearing from your colleagues at the WSO about their involvement in this concert series. Uh, how does it feel to be closing out the run? Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's it's really delightful that Carla's put this uh, series together and Gwen Sector has, uh, has uh, generously sponsored this uh, and has made it available to everybody who wants to listen to it, which is absolutely uh, terrific uh, idea so everyone can stay safe at home and uh, it gives us an opportunity to be on a stage which is uh, very rare these days. Well I wanted to ask you a little bit more about that I mean the way that things have been the past year or so have you had the opportunity to to perform much chamber music? Uh, no I mean people early on were trying to do these little uh pastiches where everybody would have uh have themselves performing and then you tile it together and then people just i think just felt very sad about that because you never got to hear your colleagues and interplay with them uh, we've been very fortunate that uh, the winnipeg symphony has put on uh, smaller performances and we've actually gotten to play some gems of the repertoire that we wouldn't necessarily otherwise play on the stage and actually i kind of hope that that continues that we kind of delve into some of that smaller repertoire and some pieces that are like just for brass or just for a small combination of instruments because uh, from the feedback people really enjoy hearing those as well I, i've really enjoyed hearing them too and like you say they're not the pieces that you typically get to hear a, a symphony orchestra play and i i know that you're passionate about chamber music i mean you've performed at the festival ensemble of the festival of the sound and you've toured with the chamber ensemble octagon what, what do you enjoy so much about this repertoire there is this kind of a freedom and an interplay that can happen in a real kind of communication and real kind of spontaneity that happens with, with chamber music and somebody can kind of take it to the edge a little more than you can. The, uh, the uh, full orchestra is rather like a heaving galleon on a, on a giant sea and uh, sometimes the, the cutlery goes flying and you never know <laughs> what parts are going to be rusted out or whatnot. I could go on with the metaphor, but uh, <laughs> let's just say that there's something about it that is just a little bit like, whoa, you're on this giant, um, in, you're in this giant machine. And uh, the chamber music is much more finely tuned uh, situation and uh, you can take more more chances individual chances and uh, so it's uh, it becomes a more personal journey well and speaking of that personal journey um, for this concert um, you're performing alongside your fellow uh, days hotel faculty of, of music colleague Laura Lowen what's it like performing with Laura well, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just love uh, hearing Laura's playing and she's uh, very adventurous. And on this program, I also asked her uh, what what uh, solo piece she would like to contribute as well. So she takes center stage. I think uh, the idea of an, accompaniment, an accompanist in a recital is a very antique notion. Mm -hmm. Now we really do talk about collaborative uh, pianists and so I think that uh, it, it is much more kind of a chamber music sense when you perform with a pianist nowadays and uh, I do like to say well what is in the program for them what allows them to to shine so I'm delighted by what she's uh, choosing to contribute here too. So we've alluded to the program tell us what she'll be playing and then tell us what you'll be playing together. Oh okay well we're going to start out with uh, uh, Mendelssohn's uh, Spring Song and it's probably the most famous I think of his uh, maybe over four dozen songs without words and uh, everybody will recognize this piece and uh, so we played uh, in, in rehearsal we've played around with the tempo what kind of suits the, the mood the style sometimes it's played in a broad romantic style and then that sounds a little pompous so that's another thing where it's kind of fun in chamber music you can choose what uh, what you do with a piece like that yeah absolutely it is and I mean um I guess people will just have to tune in to figure out what you settled on. So a, a little carrot there. Um, yeah. I also noticed that there's not only music of, of Felix Mendelssohn, but also his sister Fanny on the program. Is that right? 
Yeah, and that is something that w was very close to uh, to Laura's heart to to put in. And uh, yeah, Fanny was very much, I, I would say, overlooked in mm -hmm. her lifetime by the general public. A lot of her music was not performed or published in her lifetime. Some were of her pieces were published under Felix's name, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, as I mentioned before the interview, I'm I'm always fascinated by the letters of the composers, what they said about their their music, and I just like to uh, uh, read because uh, you'll see that uh, when you read their letters, there that uh, like there is real proof in the letters that there was uh, there was social prejudice and patriarchal kind of mores going on there that prevented her from from going ahead, like. Felix wrote this, like, from my knowledge of Fanny, I should say that she has neither inclination nor vocation for authorship. She is too much all that a woman ought to be for this. She regulates her house and neither thinks of the public nor of the musical world, nor of music at all until her first duties are fulfilled. Publishing would only disturb her in these, and I cannot say that I approve of it. So that was where things were kind of at, but that was what he wrote as a public kind of statement. But in private, they encouraged each other. And this song that uh, that Laura's chosen was written to him as as kind of a letter. Those songs without words, they felt like the words would just interfere and would would never allow for the, the real character of the piece to emerge. And he got quite indignant if his songs without words, if if uh, words were actually put to them, they said. He said, that hammers down the meaning in a way that music never does. So uh, they would write these as postcards back to each other. but. Fanny, you know, she tried to play the the good upper class uh, wife as well, and this was going on as an under undercurrent. And she, so, I think it's really it's it's really a product of the times. But she wrote something that I think uh, is very telling about this too. Uh, she wrote a song cycle about the stages of life mm -hmm. and they're deeply autobiographical and she said of them i've been composing a good deal lately my piano pieces will form a delightful souvenir a kind of second diary they are for home use entirely and you certainly can't imagine any male composer of the day saying or any kind of uh, expressing any opinion like that but when you uh, hear laura play this on stage you will see that she is every bit the composer that uh that Mendelssohn is so yeah that's, uh, that, that's exactly yeah. what I was going to say is that I mean like we, we talk about Felix Mendelssohn and his precocious young talent but by all accounts Fanny was equally talented and, and like you say they had that symbiotic relationship um one really working closely with the other even though uh, Felix as you read publicly dissuaded and discouraged his own sister from pursuing her talents and and her, their father as well um she just a, a phenomenal composer a great pianist and, and one of those who finally at the end of her life starts to get things published and then tragically she she dies and and felix as well and so i mean that that re relationship and um and her music so thrilled that it's on the program and that and that you're you're turning the spotlight on her writing as well. Now, I, I was looking at the rest of the program here, and it's a, mm -hmm. a very diverse, pleasant program. Um, there's also some music of Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart and music of Karl D Davidov, who's the czar of the cellists. Now, Ken, I I didn't know <laughs> does does he write music for the horn, or are these uh, arrangements or transcriptions for horn? Oh yeah, this is a transcription. Yeah, that's of, what I figured. Of yeah. One of one of his romances, and uh, yeah, we we did want to put a piece by a Jewish composer on the on the program uh, that's going to be performed at the Asper uh, Jewish Community Center, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, one thing I, I I find interesting about Davidoff uh, is the the cello that he played on. It's called the Davidoff cello. It's uh, it was then played by Jacqueline Dupre, and it's one of the most beautiful Stradivariuses and uh, I've actually heard it on stage because uh, uh, one year I did a, a performance I was playing in the orchestra Yo-Yo Ma was the uh, the soloist and uh, I was able after the the break to go out and to, and listen to to him perform on this cello and to, that's a real connection and actually uh, one of my very good friends studied with the teacher he studied with is right in a lineage right back to Davidoff. So wow. uh, I put this piece on the program just uh, kind of, I feel like I have a, a very tenuous proxy collection, uh, connection to him. And I think that's also the cello that uh, 
Yo-Yo Ma accidentally left in the back of uh, uh, this is a famous story left yeah, in the yeah. back of somebody's uh, uh, taxi cab in New York City and yeah. eventually got back again. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I I like how you describe it as a, a tenuous proxy relationship with Davidov. But it, what is so fascinating to me in music is that even though you know we put these composers on pedestals or we read about them in textbooks, they were real people, and the connection to them is still alive today. And it's so cool that you're exploring that here in Winnipeg with this program. Um, Ken, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today at Classic 107 about this uh, wonderful close to the uh, Gwen Sector Creative Living Center concert series produced by Carla Burbrayer. Yeah, thanks for having me on. We'll have to have you back again sometime soon. I feel like you've got more stories to tell us, Ken. We didn't even get to the Mozart. Oh, well, <laughs> well people are just going to have to tune in. I mean, we're dangling <laughs> carrot after carrot. It should be a wonderful show. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time again, Ken.